Welcome students to Flight Laboratory. So far we have discussed thrust required, power required for a cruise. We have also discussed range, endurance. Very important thing, the takeoff and landing. So today this is a warm up lecture for takeoff and landing. Please draw your attention to this part which is the landing gear. Okay? And you could see this type of configurations are called tricycle landing gear. One nose wheel and two rear wheels. When we are going for a takeoff, at an appropriate speed, the nose will be raised high like this and it will continue and lift off and then it will do like this for a cruise. Okay? So once I am going like this, I have started the engine, got a particular speed through acceleration and then I will pull the elevator and elevator will go up that will make the aircraft roll slightly like this and then continues flying, climbing and after that again I make the neutral position of the elevator or to, or to a desired elevator position basically I am now reducing the elevator angle and I maintain a cruise. Why all these things? Why I try to lift the nose up? Because I want to get lift. Because for takeoff, I need to have lift little more than the weight, or at least lift equal to weight. Okay. Now, for getting that lift, I need angle between the airplane and the velocity vector. That is why I have to roll this airplane for a tricycle landing gear configuration. Okay. This is one part. I have been mentioning at a particular speed it will roll the airplane and how do the pilot know about the speed for that we have got the initial briefing about air speed indicator and Peter's tube we will have more discussion on aircraft instrument in a detailed manner maybe two lectures will be dedicated on that just for completion you could see here it is the Peter's tube okay and you could see there is a hole here here the this in all the air goes inside and pressure total goes to the air speed indicator you see the static points here from here the static pressure input goes to the air speed indicator and you know there is a diaphragm and the differential of total pressure which is inlated through this point and the static pressure from here it goes to your diaphragm and because of difference in pressure the diaphragm will contract and do like this accordingly this motion is translated through a lever and you get the readings okay it needs some calibration but important thing is before you are going for a flying because you need to know what is the speed for a pilot speed is extremely important so one has to be doubly sure that the Peter's tube is working that is sometime what happens some insects may lie inside this Peter's tube and actually may be getting a wrong value. So very, very dangerous situation. So any pilot before he takes off, he will ensure despite the engineer's clearance, he will check the Peters is working or not. Okay. In addition to other control surfaces, but this is extremely important. Please understand. That's why I am overstressing. So for a takeoff, I need to have correct speed and correct orientation. That is the main thing. Now let us uh, see. Another type of landing gear which I will be showing there. We were showing tricycle type landing gear. But you see this is airplane, it's Piper Super Cub, one of the very powerful airplane. We have been using it for long, for more than 40 years. Now this is grounded and we are using it for uh, static demonstration. You could see here, this is not a tricycle type landing gear. This is basically a tail dragger. There is a tail wheel landing gear there and two here. Okay. What is the difference between this configuration and the tricycle configuration? You could see, even at this position, this, this wing is making an angle of attack with the velocity vector. If it is going straight, there is the angle of attack. So now, when we are going for a takeoff, already it has got a high ang angle of attack. But the moment I try to start the engine and try to do taxiing, this will produce a lot of drag. Okay. So what is done, ki when the pilot is taxiing this airplane at some speed, he will use the elevator and take the tail portion up. So it will become almost horizontal like this. Okay. So nose wheel touching the ground and the tail wheel will be little up. 
and then at an appropriate speed when he reaches, then he again he pulls up and goes. Because advantage is this, this wing is having already some angle of attacks with respect to the horizontal. But why all these things? Please understand, finally to take off, I want to take off at the lowest possible speed. And that you know by now, that is possible when the CL max is large. That means for a pilot, theoretically speaking, he will try to fly at an angle during takeoff, which corresponds to near alpha stall, that is near CL max, which generally may not be really realistic. So what is done? You try to fly at a high angle of attack. In a sense, compared to 2, 3 degrees, you try to come um, 8, 9 degrees and have sufficient speed and you go for a takeoff. Before I end, I want to stress another point for as per the landing gear is concerned. Remember, for all this tricycle landing gear, we have understood why the CG should be little ahead of landing gear. Otherwise, this tail will hit the ground. But for a tail dragger, the CG is behind the this landing gear part. Okay, so that is why if you ask many pilots, they although they enjoy flying this machine, but they also have very reservation about about crosswind performance, especially when landing. You know, it is something like driving a car with an engine at the back. You know, you have to fly like this. Well, barring that, it was a very popular configuration and. Many, many years this configuration was in existence. I am sure there are many pilots who love this configuration. I personally love this airplane. Okay, thank you. So far, we were demonstrating you the landing gear, their orientation. We talked about tricycle landing gear, we talked about a tail dragger, and we have realized that we need to generate sufficient lift, preferably more than the weight, to leave the ground okay now the question comes when i try to think of takeoff distance let's say we are talking about takeoff distance what should be our aim our aim should be that i should be able to design an airplane we should not take much of takeoff distance if you say the distance is too large then who's who is going to give you the land Land is so costly. So one extreme is vertical takeoff or vertical landing, the VTOL. But we are talking about fixed wing so far that we have been successful in ensuring that this takeoff distance is as low as possible depending upon the technology available. How it is done, that exactly I will be discussing. If I Recall this CL versus alpha and you know this was marked as CL max and this was alpha stall. Loosely what was the meaning is if you are flying at alpha stall you are likely to get maximum lift but slight disturbance, slight more than the alpha stall you are going into a stall and you don't want to fly in stall because lift reduces drag increases, other complicated thing happens. So mostly you try to fly somewhere here, right, okay. So that is the maximum value you can really get. And theoretically speaking, we say CL max, which is this point, but the maximum CL we are getting here. If I could somehow theoretically get CL max very large, then the V stall will be less. Why? Because we know lift equal to weight, so V equal to 2 W by S rho CL under root. If CL is CL max, then this is V stall. Okay? What is the message here? Message is very loud and clear. This is the minimum speed with which the airplane can fly for a given wing loading and given density, that is given altitude. Because this is, the max, you have maximized the contribution of lift coefficient CL max, right? But I repeat again, pilot will not like to fly at that CL max. Because if there is slight disturbance, he may dip into a stall. 
so it'll be flying a little less, maybe 20% less than CL max, which is practical. So if I want to reduce V stall, if you want to reduce it, why I should reduce? Because we are talking about takeoff, okay? That is, I am starting from V equal to 0 to V takeoff. We will let you know what is this takeoff. It will be 10 to 20 percent more than the V stall and it goes up. If I want this distance to be smaller, what are the options I have got? I have got put an engine which is having very high thrust to weight ratio because this is responsible for acceleration. This is T is thrust. Loosely we say high power engine. Right. Then if if it accelerates very fast, then it takes smaller distance to get to V takeoff. If it is a lowly power, then it will take longer distance. So one way you increase the T by W as high as possible, but then there is a problem. The moment you want to put a high thrust, high power or powerful engine, the weight may be a, a penalty. But there is a limit for engine. So what is the approach? Yes, whatever best one could do for T by W we will do in realistic manner. However, from whole aerodynamics point of view or more precisely by taking the advantage of aerodynamics, we can still reduce the this distance. How that could be reduced? That could be reduced if I reduce V stall. That is, minimum speed the airplane can fly. And to reduce V stall, I have to increase CL max. The message is clear. If we want short takeoff distance, then reduce this V stall. To reduce V stall, what I could do for a given wing loading and altitude, I have option of increasing CL max. So then now the question comes. How can I decrease V stall? That is the question. So to decrease V stall, one thing we have re realized, I have to increase CL max. Second thing, if I want to decrease V stall, there is another very important parameter sitting here is wing loading. So if I want to decrease V stall, what I have to do with wing loading? I have to reduce wing loading. And reduction of wing loading means what? If you want to reduce this, like CL max, reduce V stall further, I have to reduce the wing loading. Reducing wing loading means what? I have to increase the wing area. Okay. So keep this in mind. This is important. And, and we will use this concept. Use this concept. Okay. It's very important. Let's not lose insight. Please understand again. We want to reduce the takeoff distance. To reduce takeoff distance, we have understood the V stall or the speed at which lift equal to weight should be low. To ensure that V stall is low, I have two options. One is I should increase CL max or I should decrease W by S. Or I do both the thing, that is, increase CL max and decrease W by S. If I could do that, I will be able to reduce V stall and immediately you will see that the takeoff distance will reduce. Okay. Let me also further stress on V stall. Classically, when we are talking about V stall, we are talking about you know the situation where this lift equal to weight. And of course, thrust equal to drag, right? That is how you write V is equal to, or you write L equal to W. So V equal to 2 W by S rho CL. Okay. And for V stall, right here, this is CL max. No issues. This is a classical definition of V stall. But in practice, what happened? It's not that pilot is always doing cruise. He does maneuver. 
Okay, that is, he will be. Let's say he is taking a turn. This is the lift, and let's say this is the weight, and this is phi. You know that L cos phi and is equal to W. That is, he is trying to take a bank turn without losing the altitude. He is not doing this. He is doing this. So, this is a turn maneuver. Here I see L by W is 1 by cos phi. By now, you know this is N called the load factor. For lift equal to weight or for a typical cruise, N was equal to 1. And for a maneuver, this N is 1 by cos phi. That is, suppose bank angle is 60 degrees, then N is around 2, right? That is 1 by cos 60. Cos 60 is half, so this is equal to 2. You understand the meaning of load factor 2. Now you see if this load factor is 2 and if I ask you a question, what is that minimum speed with which I should fly the airplane so that I can manage this turn maneuver? Then your practical definition can be upgraded and you see it is N W by S by rho C L max. That is because lift equal to N W now. Are you clear about it? If we are doing a turn maneuver, then lift is no more equal to weight. Lift is N W. Okay. And if I use the relationship, I can find the minimum speed and I will call it stall speed for maneuver is N W by S by rho C L max. And now I could see that V stall maneuver VSM is root of N V stall cruise. Let us try to understand this physically. Suppose pilot is going like this and there is some necessity for him to turn like this, go this way. So what he does? He bangs and then he turns like this. Okay. Now, as per this relationship that the minimum speed should be Vs, which is more than the classical V stall speed. By how much? By root of n. So, this gentleman Vsm is greater than Vs cruise. That means when I am trying to bank and turn my stall speed to maintain that maneuver, my minimum speed to maintain that maneuver will be more and my engine must have enough power or if I am not utilizing the engine power or I am already at the threshold of engine power, then I should have enough lift to produce that load factor. And in that process, in the confusion what can happen, the pilot may go on increasing the angle of attack and he may go into a stall unless the aircraft is properly designed. That is why the VSM stall speed for maneuver is so important. A designer must ensure that within the flight envelope for different end, he, the pilot in command should be able to generate this much of load factor without going into stall. Right? This is extremely important. Many accidents happen because of this confusion. Okay. So, if I summarize what you have seen, V stall is 2, N W by S by rho C L max, where for N equal to 1 is our classical V stall, which is 2 W by S by rho C L max. Also, we have seen V S for maneuver is root of N into V stall cruise based on the cruise. Okay? 
Now, here also you have seen that L by W is cos phi. Just to give you a feel, you can check yourself if it is 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, up to 60 degree, you can see from and phi equal to 0 degree from 1 to 2, this load factor changes. And that is an appreciable change, right? And one has to be fairly, fairly cautious. A designer has to be fairly, fairly sincere and systematic to ensure that the pilot has this bandwidth. He can do a bank and he gets enough power, enough CL without going into all those troubled area. Okay, thank you.